This is the 27th of September of 2020. And uh, this is part two of Luke chapter nine. Okay, first we're gonna pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to put everyone in a bubble of protection that hears my voice. I ask that only your word goes out, touch my eyes and my speech and my mind, Father. And only that your Holy Spirit goes through and touch the heart of everyone that's listening. Keep us safe. Give us more of a desire to know more of you. Father, I ask you to upload this video quickly and fast with no hiccups. And I ask you to keep it cool and quiet in here and, and quiet outside. And in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to start now where we left off. And that was with uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, uh, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a promise that we will walk in newness of life and that he'll raise us again. So let's look at Luke chapter 9, verse 34. Okay, let's go back to Luke 9 and verse 34. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. Okay, I find this interesting that uh, um, here, and when, the, and when God wants to speak to Hebrew people, they're afraid. Okay, I find that here and other places in the word especially in the uh, old testament where god wanted to speak to the hebrew people they got afraid and said no you speak to us for like in the instance of moses moses you speak to us we don't want to hear god be sweet eye we don't want to hear him but we will hear you isn't that interesting they will hear a man people today even will hear a man look at the pope look at a lot of these religious people religious people right Religions that have these heads, they'll listen to them, but they don't want to go ask the Father God for themselves. I find it quite sad. Very sad. Okay. So we're going to look at Exodus 20, verse 19, and that's some of what I had just said now. Like I said, I just find this very sad. I wish more people would go to the Father and ask Him. So we're going to go to Exodus 20 and 19. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. I want everything God has to offer me. I don't want to be left out. So me, I want to hear God's voice. Okay, I don't want anything hindering my relationship with him. So this is why it's vital to continue to ask Father God through Jesus Christ to forgive you. And, see, I want him to show me what, what I'm involved with and what I'm doing. Anything, the fact that, I, that does not please him, I want to know so I can repent of it. Like I said, we're going to leave this body here when it deceases, and we're going to go to one place or the other, either eternal uh, life with our Creator or eternal separation from our Creator, which is hell. And I don't want anyone to go there. Okay, now on Luke, we're going to look at Luke chapter 9, verse 46 to 48. I'd like to expand on this for a minute, but we're going to read it first. Luke 9, 46 to 48. 46 to 48. Then there arose a great reason among them, which of them should be greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a child and set him by him. And said unto them, Who, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you all the same shall be great. Okay? So the, the, uh, the playing field is leveled. See, that's, that's awesome. 
that is very awesome to me. The playing level, the playing field is leveled now. You're not going in there like, oh, you're better than me and I'm, I'm worse than you, whatever. We're all on the same level, which is awesome when we accept Christ and come to him. So I love it. Uh, let's look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 28. Galatians 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a God we serve. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're going to go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 28. 26 to 28. For ye all are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye all are one in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. This also, this also makes me uh, believe, you know, it's Abraham's seed. It, it, it means is we're all one in Christ after you've accepted Christ. That's why Jesus said several times, I know you are Abraham's seed, but you choose not to do, you know, what, what I tell you, whatever. And uh, I don't remember where that's at, but he's telling them like it is, and they didn't like it. So we, you know, it just makes sense. So we see in God's economy that all are the same in Christ Jesus. We must all come as little children. And if you look at Matthew, let's do that. Matthew 11 and verses 13 and 14. Matthew 11, verses 13 and 14. Thank you, Father. Matthew 11, 13 and 14. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John... And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. It's me right here. Awesome. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So why come to Christ as a child? Okay, Webster's Dictionary uh, describes childlike as becoming a child, meek, humble, submissive, dutiful. Okay, what do children do? They trust and they believe. Okay. Hallelujah. So God seeks a submissive, childlike, meek, gleeful, childlike heart. And we see that said again in Matthew chapter 18, verses 3 and 4. Matthew 18. And then verse 3 and 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as a little child, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whew. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greater in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So... The last thing I'd like to expand on is Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Let's go back to Luke chapter 9, verse 62. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. We must do what Elisha did when Elijah threw his mantle onto him. Okay, we must decide to get rid of everything that may pull us back into our old life. And we see that, in fact, we see what he did in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 19 to 20. Let's look at that. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 to 21. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, 
and gave on to the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. You see what Elijah did right there? He did away with everything. He destroyed his life that he was doing, you know, his plowing. And obviously he only took two, two yokes of oxen and made a feast. And obviously it was a fast feast. And also I did a video, it's on my YouTube channel, go and look down the videos, and it's, uh, I can't remember the whole name, but it's something like uh, Desire More, Don't Be Content, Desire More, that's the name of it, Don't Be Content, Desire More. And I discuss Elijah and Elisha and what happened. So that's interesting to know those things and how they lived and, uh, you know, what was in that day, what was going on. So leave no bridge back to your old life. Just like I just read to you with uh, what Elisha did when Elijah came for him. Okay. I say this because it shows um, commitment and resolve. So please watch my YouTube video, Don't Be Content, Desire More. Don't Be Content, Desire More. Just mentioned that to you. This video goes uh, into more of this above thought. Because verily we want to hear, come ye blessed of my Father, enter into the kingdom of God. And that's in Matthew chapter 25, I think it's the last one, Matthew chapter 25 verse 34. And we're going to look at that. Matthew 25 verse... 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Whew, we don't want to hear, Depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. We don't want to hear that. And that's obvious, because that means eternal separation from your Creator. So I pray that uh, God touched you, and I'm going to believe that the Holy Spirit has, has uh, entered into your heart and taught you some things. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for this time that we studied your word. I thank you for the people that have listened to my voice. I thank you for the people that have listened to your message, Father, and I, th I thank you for the opportunity to come and be able to Study the Word. Study your Word. It could be alive again another day to study your Word and see your beautiful creation. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. And I'm going to end with this prayer. Father Yahweh, in the name of Jesus, my Christ, I ask you to forgive me of known and unknown sins. I ask you to show me any dark spots in me so I can repent of them. Father, forgive me for not forgiving myself. Father, I ask you to help me forgive myself and others that have hurt me. Father, of my own free will, I choose to forgive anyone that has caused me pain or injured me. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over these sins. Father, wash away my sins, the sins of others that have wounded me, and the sins of my ancestors. Father, I ask in Jesus' name for you to apply your dunamis power, that power that raised Christ from the dead, to my soul wound. Now I know that my sins are forgiven and my soul wounds are healed. And Father, in Jesus' name, I pray these things. And the scriptures that back it up is Leviticus chapter 17, I'll say it. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 to 14. 3 John, verse 2. And Psalms 103, 12. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve an awesome, mighty, wonderful creator. Thank you, Father. God bless you.